Yes. Lau, it's very nice to have you here with us today as part of this interview series where we are getting to know the editors for chemical engineering research and design. So as always, I'd like to give you the, the opportunity to tell us about yourself, to uh, introduce your background and where you are working. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for having me today. Uh, I'm Lau, I'm currently working at University of Technology Malaysia, UTM as an associate professor and head of research group. I joined church early this year as a subject editor. Mm -hmm. Before this, I edited a special issue on membrane technology with Professor Feng from the uh, University of Waterloo, Canada. Uh, he is also a topic coordinator of church. Yeah. And so actually tell us a little bit more uh, about your research, please, because I, I have a great research interest in membranes. So I'd love to hear more about your, your research background and the work that you're doing there. My research uh, focuses on the development of membrane with input sulfate property for water and wastewater treatment. Mm -hmm. More specifically, I, I work on a thin film composite membrane through the incorporation of advanced unknown material into the polymeric matrix via new fabrication technique. They are easier, faster, and more environmental friendly. Actually, our aim is to develop a membrane that can compete with the uh, com commercial membrane in terms of uh, water flux rejection mm -hmm. and anti-fouling properties. Yeah. Okay. For for nanofiltration or for RO or? Uh, uh, mainly nanofiltration mm -hmm. and also reverse homosis. Yeah. Great. And what scale are you working with? So uh, for people, uh, just just before you answer, most people uh, that are listening to uh, this, this video uh, wouldn't know what thin film composite uh, membranes are. So maybe if you could very quickly explain how, how we make them. Um, and then, yeah, answer if you're working at small yeah. scale or, or a larger scale. Thin film composite membrane actually is the is a membrane that normally used in the industry for reverse osmosis and nanofiltration process. It is mainly used to uh, for the seawater distillations. Mm -hmm. The reason people use thin film composite membrane is mainly because it can give very high flux compared yeah. to asymmetric membranes. And how we fabricate the membrane lab scale is basically you need to have a substrate. And this substrate normally is an alpha creation membrane. And on top of the substrate, you need to form a polyamide layers, which is you can perform a interfacial polymerization mm -hmm. through the two different monomers. And by having two different monomer interactions, you can form very thin layer on mm -hmm. top of the alpha creation membrane. And at the end, you can uh, produce a TFC membrane for the uh, reverse homocy or nano creation process. And and in terms of scale, you're working at relatively small. Uh, or? We, we we usually what the membrane size is about uh, half of the A4 size, but oh, we can increase okay. this. Yeah, we can increase it into uh, about one page of the A4 size. But we haven't tried larger scale so far, like more than uh, or I would say one meter square because it's uh, simply too large for us. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a very large investment to go to that next stage uh, and it re requires a lot of lab space and consumes very large quantities of chemicals. So that's that's understandable. But even um, the, the, the starting scale that you're working at is, is I think, quite reasonable size. Um, yeah. So that's very interesting to hear. Good. Um, so we'll move on with the questions. Um, can you tell us about your work in the journal? So in particular, uh, what section of the journal you are working in? What type of manuscripts do you typically handle? I'm the subject editor for the section of separation processes. And uh, most of the time I handle the manuscripts that are related to membrane research, mm -hmm. such as new membranes and material synthesis and characterizations, membrane simulation and uh, modeling, okay. as well as membrane performance iteration for different applications. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm also editing a special issue with uh, Professor Yong from Xiamen University, Malaysia on the topic related to the membrane development and application for challenging environments. And this issue is expected to complete by first half of 2022. Okay, so could you just explain a bit more if there are people that are watching this video that might be interested to submit to your special issue um, a little bit more about the scope of what it covers, for example, some of the particular separations that you're targeting? Yeah, uh, because I think there are many people uh, aware that there are actually a lot of spatial issues from other journals, mm -hmm. particularly for the membranes. But this spatial issue is targeting challenging environments. For example, membrane used for high temperatures, membrane used for extreme pH, 
maybe PH1 or 2 or PH13, 14, or membrane used for the high operating pressures. Yeah, so, so this is a main, main target why we, we, we want to create a very special issue for these sections. Yeah. So Lau, can you tell us um, what do you find rewarding? What do you find enjoyable uh, from your work as an editor for the journal? Uh, the best thing working as an editor is to be able to get to know many editorial board members with different research background from all over the world. In the editorial board meeting held in October this year, I actually learned a lot from the senior member who are giving a lot of good suggestions and advice on how to handle the manuscript and mm -hmm. improve the quality of paper published in church. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's that's a very nice uh, take on it. I, I'm pleased to hear that. And uh, from from the other side, when people are preparing their uh, manuscripts for submission to the journal, so our authors, um, what tips would you give them? So especially if they're sending uh, manuscripts to your section towards the separation section. Yeah, okay. I would like to suggest the author to study the guides for authors of mm -hmm. prior to uh, manuscript submission because every journal has different standards. Yeah. And submitting a manuscript with correct formats will ensure your manuscript passes the technical check and save your time. And also, I would like to encourage authors to always follow the latest issue at church in order to understand better the current progress of the research topic and what the editor expects from the submitted manuscript. And so, in a, in a broader sense, uh, do you have any, any comments about where you see the field going? So, for example, you work a lot with membranes for water or liquid phase separations, but especially water treatment. So water um, is one of the big uh, global challenges. It features in the sustainability um, UN SDG, Sustainable Development Goals. What contribution do you see membrane research or membranes in chemical engineering research as, um, as playing in that future sustainable development? Yeah, uh, you are right. Membranes uh, has been used actually for many, many years. Uh, since uh, 1960 mm -hmm. and uh, we can see that there are more and more countries started, started to use the membrane for the uh, water treatment and also wastewater recycling and even in Malaysia actually we already have a first uh, seawater desalination uh, process or plants okay. yeah in Malaysia and it was launched in 2018 and it's able to produce uh, water from the sea water for a small village and this is a the first large scale of the seawater desalination in Malaysia. And uh, just to, to, to round out the, the interview, uh, do you have any, any general comments that you would like to share regarding our journal or about um, chemical engineering in general? Uh, I think our world is constantly changing and evolving and this uh, possesses a huge challenge to the human to adapt. Chemical engineering is actually a very important field in addressing these challenges through mm -hmm. sustainable energy production. Uh, wastewater is decremation, nutrient recovery, plastic waste recycling, just to name a few. I strongly believe the progress in the chemical engineering research will create a practical solutions to the challenges we face in the world. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, and thank you for, for that encouragement to our readers, to our viewers, uh, and to our authors. Lau, it has been um, a real pleasure to, to meet you. This is the first time that we've had a face-to-face -face discussion and of course um, at the moment it is via Zoom um, because most of us are all stuck in our own countries due to COVID but I really hope to to meet you in future um, in person uh, maybe yeah. at a chemical engineering or a membrane uh, conference somewhere because I'm also working in the membrane field um, it would be a great pleasure to catch up with you thanks very much and thank you for your time yes thank you